Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you voted in our YouTube poll about the next video, then you'll be not so surprised to know that this one is about the ice cream calculator, Dream Scoops ice cream calculator to be more specific. So if you wanna know how to use one, stick around and I'll talk you through it. Okay, so here we go, Dream Scoops ice cream calculator. Um, this is an online ice cream calculator. You don't have to download it to anything. You can just pop online and do it and it will help you balance out your recipes to make sure that all your ice creams turn out really nice. So let's get the computer loaded up, share the screen and show you what we're doing. And here we go. This is where you are going here. So I'll put this link in the description below. And this will be the page that opens up to you. It's, you know, a nice little intro. It's a good little website, actually, if, um, if you want some, some light reading for ice cream. Anyway, you, don't, you can read through this if you want. I know how it works. We'll scroll down, and here we go. This is the ice cream calculator itself. There's some predetermined numbers in here that we're going to change. But in the back end, all of these cells have calculations attached to them that means when you put in the numbers of all your ingredients, you'll get some totals down here, and it will also tell you how much of your ice cream you're gonna end up with. It will give you some basic details about um, pack and relative sweetness, but if I'm honest, I don't find those particularly accurate. Um, obviously, that's where Patrick's ice cream calculator comes in. I will do another video on that because a lot of people wanted that, it appears. So, let's get started. We're gonna create a deep chocolate ice cream with a chocolate olive oil stracciatella. Sounds good. So first thing we're going to do is double click each cell and change it the percentage to our milk fat. So we're going to use 2% milk here. I'm going to click, on, I'm on Apple so it's return, but click enter, whatever you want to call it. And then it will drop down to your cream. We're going to use 33% fat lucerne cream, by the way, just in case you haven't seen my other Canadian cream videos. You can just keep pressing enter or return and go back down to the cocoa powder fat percentage. We're gonna use Ghirardelli, so thank God it's not Hershey's. Ghirardelli is around 16% fat, it's actually 16.6, .6, so let's, let's put that in. And here we go, this is the, the area of the website we put in the numbers. So we're gonna start with some known entities and see where we get. So again, I'm just pressing enter here and it'll drop down to the next box. You don't have to type anything at that point other than the numbers that you want in there, okay? So we're gonna put in 300 grams of milk, 300 grams of cream, 110 grams of sugar. Let's put in 20 grams of dextrose. We're not gonna put in the maltodextrin. I don't like that. We're not gonna put any invert sugar in this. We're not gonna put honey, corn syrup, condensed milk, no. Skim milk powder, yes, we're gonna put in some. Let's put a starting figure of 40 grams in there. We're also gonna put in 25 grams of cocoa powder. We're also gonna put in a little bit of stabilizer. So we've now got some xanthan gum, incredibly expensive over here. These are our basic numbers, okay? So we're at 13%. 13.7% fat, 10.4% milk solids non-fat, 16.4 sugar, and 43.3 total solids. Okay, so 10.4, I'm just gonna drop a couple of grams off that. 10.2, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, 25 grams of cocoa. Hey look, that, that's, not a, that's not a bad little mix there. If you scroll down, you can see what they recommend. 12 to 14% fat for, for luxury, which is North America, yes. Um, super premium, 14 to 18. If you've got an 18% fat using Canadian cream, you're gonna struggle. It, it's just gonna be a greasy, horrible mess. So stick in the premium ice cream and use better ingredients. That will bring you into the super premium level, okay? 40 to 42% total solids, 43. I like it a tiny little bit higher. Um, super premium, 14 to 17% sugar. We're at 16.4, nice. See here, it recommends 
stabilizer. Now we've got 793 grams total mixture. Okay, so if we really wanted to put the right amount, the 0.1% stabilizer for xanthan gum, remember xanthan gum is quite a strong single level stabilizer. I wouldn't want to put in 0.2%. So 0.2% being 1.4 grams is a lot. So I'm, I'm going to put in one whole gram of xanthan gum. Okay, I won't do anything really to the to the recipe. But this is what we've got. Okay, we got a pack 22.7, relative sweetness 15.7, and that relative sweetness relates to this here, this line here. So we've got our 110 grams of sugar, 20 grams of dextrose. Remember, dextrose isn't as sweet as sucrose. Um, it also is really, really good at depressing the freezing point. So it makes it much more scoopable than a solid block of whatever that you buy in your stores. And that is where we are gonna stop, I think. This is where we're gonna keep our recipe, 300, 300, 110, 20 grams of dextrose, 38 of skim milk powder, and 25 of cocoa with one sole lonely gram of xanthan gum. All right, let's get those in the pan, warmed up, get everything dissolved, and then we can get it in the fridge. I couldn't wait any longer for my scale, so I went out and bought some. These are straight from Canadian Tire, nice and cheap. But it really, really helps when making ice cream because you need these exact numbers to create a perfect ice cream. You can't just wing it with cups and hope for the best. So scales is the way to go. Plus, I'm from England, we use scales grams, all that kind of jazz. So, get our milk and cream out and let's get started. So we're gonna bring the recipe up on the screen. So we went for 300 milk. Ooh. 300 milk, okay? Exactly 300. I, I can't tilt it and show you, but it is. And we're looking at 300 of cream. Nice and easy to do when you got scales. There's no messing around. No washing up cups while you're... There we go, perfect. Washing up cups while you're in the middle of creating a recipe. Blech. No thanks. No thank you. Sugar. I haven't got the sugar. Noise. Right, sugar. 110 grams. Let's get this in. It's a bit slow, this cheap our scales so we're just going to give it time to catch up there we go 110 20 grams of dextrose going in here we're gonna tear it again and use a spoon 20 grams of dextrose nice I think more and more people in North America are using grams these days. But use whatever works for you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. 38 grams of skin milk powder. 38 grams. I might go for a bigger spoon here. There we go. 38 grams of skin milk powder. And finally, we've got our oh, beautiful Ghirardelli, this is Dutch, cocoa. I've got some nice stuff coming over, which is really good. Just placed another order for some Cocoa Berry Brute, which is really, really nice cocoa powder. Here with 25 grams of our cocoa powder. Oh, it smells good. So I've got a delivery coming. I've always got deliveries coming. Moving country, 25. 
Moving country, it's surprising how much stuff you have to buy. 25 grams, nice. What is it this time? I think it's furniture. I have got tips if you're moving country. Uh, if you're interested in, oh my God, why can't I get this closed back up? No, nope, I'll do that in a minute. Right, that's it, we're gonna get this on the hob and start warming it up gently. Okie doke. As always, nice slow stirs, just warm this up. We're not really trying to do anything crazy. You do want to bloom cocoa powder though. It's um, blooming, it's just a fancy word, just to say warm it up. Essentially what you're doing is you're bringing the fats, the cocoa fats out of the powder and distributing that properly because if you're interested or not, cocoa powder never actually truly dissolves on an atomic level. It just breaks up into its individual little elements and floats around in your liquid. Um, and when you see like a nice chalky milkshake or something and it starts to separate, that's what that is. That is your cocoa powder in your drinking chocolate or if you're just using cocoa powder itself. It's the solid particles sinking back down because they're not dissolved and then when you whisk it back up, they will re-emulsify temporarily into the liquid and then you've got what you think is a nicely dissolved cocoa powder. Anyway, I'll stop yambering on and get this up to temperature and sit it there for a couple of minutes, let that xanthan gun do its thing and then we'll get it in a container into the fridge. Interestingly enough, Ghirardelli cocoa powder doesn't dissolve or, you know, disperse quite as easily as Hershey's. So at least Hershey's have done something right with their cocoa powder. The rest is crap. But um, anyway, we're up to temperature. Let's get it in. Let's get it in this noisy bowl straight into the fridge. Kadok, now we've got our chocolate chilled down. If you use cocoa powder and it doesn't completely dissolve in the fridge, you'll see little black spots, dark spots. And that is the last little few bits of cocoa powder. Just they've, you know, kind of dissolved somewhat into your base. Just give them a quick stir. If they really don't dissolve, then you can either just run it through a fine mesh sieve or take a spoon and just, you know, take them off the top. But these are all completely gone in the base nicely now. Let's put it in the machine, and when we're near completion, we're gonna get our chocolate olive oil stracciatella mix ready. So, let's get a move on. So whilst that's finishing off, we're gonna get our chocolate. This is, I think this is from Walmart. It's their uh, finest range, 72% Coco, let's break some of this up. We're gonna put it in a tiny little jar. This is the olive oil we're using, extra virgin olive oil. You've gotta use extra virgin, you've gotta use real olive oil because if you use a blend of oil, then it very well may not freeze because some oils don't. So I've decanted some off, this is what we use for cooking, strangely enough. We're just gonna put a touch in there, like so. That's approximately 15 to 20 grams. Gonna put that in the microwave, short little stints until it's melted and we'll stir it together. Okay. Last, you want to take it, if you use the microwave, you want to take it out just before it all melts. So that whilst there's still a couple of small little pieces in there and then stir it for the last 10, 15, 20 seconds to make sure those last bits are melted without burning your chocolate. You shouldn't burn it with the oil in. You can use coconut oil if you want. Any, any oil you like the flavor of, but it needs to be able to set 
So here we go. Ice cream is ready. Let's pour this in. Last few seconds. Turn the compressor off. Again, just to repeat, we do that so you turn the freezer off on your machine, if you can, that is, um, to make it easier to remove from the machine. On the Muso or the Lila Muso machines, that's kind of one of their nice little features. You can turn that chiller down and then give it a minute or two to churn and you can scoop it out nice and easy. Into the freezer until tomorrow. And here we go. It's been in the freezer overnight and I'm quite excited to try this one. See, you look at the top, it looks good. Texture looks good, consistency looks good. No weeping, no ice, no nothing. That tells you that a recipe is good, balanced, and, oh, I can see all the bits of chocolate in there too. Yes. Let's go. That, oh, hell yeah. Rich chocolate, Ghirardelli, can't go wrong with it. It's an American brand. Um, smooth, really nice flavor. It's not bitter and disgusting like Hershey's. It's got this warm chocolate feeling. I imagine this would be good for hot chocolate, but. No fatty, greasy film. The chocolate stracciatella, stracciatella. It's got this, um, it's not olive oil forward, comes in at the end after you've eaten the ice cream, the chocolate's gone, then you get this, this waft of, of olive come through. It's really nice. It's really, it's really subtle, yet it kind of warms the back of your throat a little bit. It's really, really nice. Mmm. Excellent. Can't stop eating it. So, there we go. A quick lesson in Dream Scoops ice cream calculator. I'll do this again periodically so people can start to get used to using it. You can download that spreadsheet to your computer if you choose to, and then you don't have to be online to use it. Um, if you wanna know how to do that, let me know and I will show you. But overall, a Perfect chocolate ice cream with a incredibly good chocolate stratocella with olive oil throughout. Loads of that in there as well. Whew, I tell ya. Whew, that has been a journey coming over here trying to get the ice cream right. But we're there. So I am looking forward to lots of different ice cream makes. I've got a huge list as well. Loads of things gone up. Just put a poll up um, on YouTube last week. It's quite clear what people want to see. But every two weeks, I will put a poll up on YouTube. You can vote for one of four options of what you want to see me make. And then I will just get on and make it. I will probably make the other ones as well, you know, because that's just me. But... I'd like to thank all of my Kofi supporters. Uh, I'll put a little list up here so you can see those that have chosen to support the channel. 
So if you fancy supporting the channel, you can head over to Kofi. I will put a link on the screen here and it will also be in the description. If you offer support, it just helps me make the recipes that you want to see. So thank you ever so much for subscribing and nice look. We got loads of more subscribers coming on board now. We're like 3,100. So we're, we're getting some good guns. Let's see if we can get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be amazing. And... Bye.